The story begins in a place called Valhalla, one of the top three hunter training institutions where countless hunters apply but with an admission rate of 500 to 1. Not even 150 people can graduate with the name of Valhalla. The competition starts right on the day of orientation, and the successor of the Yushin family Yuman Jun arrives to watch the competition. The highest ranking compact instructor Lee Sanchiol of Valhalla knows that Min Jun came to see his niece Yu Soyin's performance during the competition. She is a genius born to the Yushin family, one of Korea's top five families, and at the age of 16, she competed against a member of the Yushin family and came out on top. Min Jun tells Sanchiol that Soyin was able to communicate with the Yushin family's guardian constellation, and that's why they expect a lot from her. Korea has five families because of the guardian constellations associated with each one. The members of the five families, Sword God from the Yushin family, Spear Saint from Jangsim, Dao King from Choijin, Fist King from Osun, and Bow God from the Dajin family, were given blessings from their respective constellations and were granted more talent and abilities than others. Soyeon has to compete with Kim Junhyuk, and Sang Chiol thinks Junhyuk doesn't seem to have any fighting spirit. Soyeon starts the competition by attacking Junhyuk, but he knocks her down with a single punch, and everyone gets shocked. Jun Huck wonders why everyone is so weak and if it's really 300 years in the future. Almost 300 years ago, Jun Huck, as a martial arts god, defeated the boss of the Tower of Destruction, Barch. After that, the tower got destroyed, and he was reincarnated in the body of a 17 years old. 300 years after the defeat of the Tower of Destruction, Jun Huck was quite satisfied with living a leisurely life before a translucent window appeared that in five years, a Tower of Destruction would appear, and he had to prepare for that. He gets a notification to reclaim his weapons and memories in the third floor fifth room to the right of Valhalla, and that's why he went to Valhalla. On the fourth day of the competition, he has to compete with the Osun family's eldest son, O Sayuk, and O Sayuk thinks he can beat Jun Huck easily. Sayuk's biggest talent was his top-tier physique. He could do things others couldn't unless they had mana. The competition starts and Sayuk runs towards Jun Hyuk to attack him, and Jun Hyuk feels that with the body he is born with, he won't be able to win against Sayuk. Jun Hyuk knows just because Sayuk is superior in physique doesn't mean he'll win, so he uses martial arts to stop his attack and slams him down with a match-ending move. Meanwhile, Sayuk's father, O Chulahin, thinks his son would have easily dodged a fist from his peers. But Jun Hyuk's attack was something else. Chulahin understands that Jun Hyuk has a monstrous talent, and unfortunately, the others also notice the value of the newcomer, but he decides to bring Jun Hyuk into his family at all costs. On the other hand, in the ranking match finals, Jun Hyuk has to face the Choijin family's daughter Choi Aran. The match starts, and she waits for Jun Hyuk to attack first. But when he runs to attack her, she immediately takes out her sword to attack him. But he dodges it smoothly, and when he punches her, she blocks her attack with her sword. Jun Hyuk again gets ready to punch her and tells her to dodge it now, but when he attacks her, he feels that his attack is a bit off, but still, it manages to take her down. Jun Hyuk tops Valhalla's top 10 admission list, and when he goes out, the media surrounds him to take his interview, and the other guilds offer him to join them, but he yells at them to shut up. The following day, Valhalla welcomes all the top 10 winners, and Jun Hyuk remembers he needs to get into Valhalla's constellation room to get his weapons a memory back, and after that, he'll leave that place. After the ceremony, the former Choijin head and Valhalla instructor Kim Lee Goon wonders why the class distribution is like that the three of the top five families, geniuses Soyin, Aran, and Sahyuk, are in the same class. He also sees Jun Hyuk in the same class and thinks he is doomed this year. He prepares himself to start strong, and after taking the students in a virtual simulation, he plans to show them bloodlust, and as the monsters appear there, he creates a barrier around him and the students. Lee Goon asks Jun Hyuk if he can take care of all the monsters and thinks that he might say no because the students have never seen monsters in real life. But Jun Hyuk, with a laugh, replies that, of course, he can. Lee Goon is shocked and tells Jun Hyuk to give it a go, but Jun Hyuk asks him what he can give him as a prize if he kills all the monsters. Lee Goon agrees to do whatever Jun Hyuk wants under Lee Goon's power, so Jun Hyuk accepts it and asks Lee Goon for a sword to fight the monsters. After giving him a sword, Lee Goon lets him go outside the barrier, and he immediately starts to kill the monsters. While Jun Hyuk kills the monsters, Lee Goon can't believe Jun Hyuk is cutting off monsters with a simple sword with no magic or quick swordsmanship. 
but it's like the sword is sucking in the monsters. The students are shocked to see Jun Hyuk, and as he kills all the monsters, he wishes to get down to the constellation's room and reminds Lee Goon to keep his promise. After completing the class, Lee Goon tells the students to go to their dorms, and while going to the dorm, Jun Hyuk thinks the class is boring. Still, he also gets some information on constellation, a term that refers to transforming those who establish great fortune into gods. Most of the constellations are involved with hunters as their holy relics, and they give them powers. On the other hand, Li Gun tells Sang Chiao about Jun Hyuk, and he thinks it's strange that he killed all the monsters alone because he has nothing special and he comes from a small orphanage in a highly dangerous area. Li Gun also told Sang Chiao that Jun Hyuk asked to go into the construction room where he can go after the first semester, but Sang Chiao said he could ask the headmaster to let Jun Hyuk in the first basement floor because the fifth floor is a restricted area. Li Gun is worried about controlling the students of his calls, but when Sang Chiao tells him that there is a student Rockdal Ventric in another class who got out of the British Academy for causing trouble, he feels like his situation is better than the class next door. Meanwhile, Jun Hyuk goes to his dorm when Aran asks him to teach her swordsmanship. Jun Hyuk refuses to teach her and tells her to stop clinging to him, and after saying piss off to her, he leaves for the dorm. The following day, Jun Hyuk, while sitting in his class, thinks his body is better than he expected, but it doesn't have magic power, and it's difficult for him to control his mana. He can solve the magic problem if he finds a specific thing, so he has to prepare some mana for him. Suddenly Rockdal Ventric of the main Ventric family, with his attendant Yuria de Felix, arrives, introduces himself to Jun Hyuk, and asks him if he doesn't want to be strong. It's much harder for branch families to gain power and wealth in most families than the main family. However, the Ventric family has a beak mask, a guardian of the constellation, making the Ventric family different from others. Rockdal wants to get Jun Hyuk on his side and offers to lead him to the Ventric family's constellation. But Jun Hyuk calls him an idiot for showing off. Rockdal gets furious, but suddenly Sang Chiao arrives there and tells Rockdal to go back to his seat and follow the instructions because it's Valhalla, not the British Academy. Rockdal furiously leaves and tells Jun Hyuk that they'll meet again. After the classes, when Jun Hyuk is going to the dorm, Aran again asks him to teach her swordsmanship, but he yells that it's enough. On the other hand, Rockdal is mad at Jun Hyuk for humiliating him, so he tells Yuria to call Desira because he needs to deal with something. Rockdal Ventric harasses Yuria to contact Desira and orders her to go and tell the son of Rise's family, who is in second grade, to meet him. Meanwhile, Ju Hyuk, while practicing in his room, thinks his body is useless because he can't draw out any magic. Ju Hyuk remembers when Aran was following him earlier because she wanted him to teach swordsmanship. He asked her for 10 million won per lesson to get rid of her, but she asked for his phone and immediately transferred money to him. He was shocked that she transferred 100 million won. Ju Hyuk thinks if he is going to teach her, he'll not give away all his secrets. Suddenly he gets up and prepares to go and find the secret vault he hid 300 years ago in the mountains of Valhalla. He finds the location of those notes with a little bit of magic he has and starts digging the place, but he feels tired. He thinks if he had known he would have to struggle so much, he would have buried it in a shallower place. Finally, after digging the whole night, he reaches the vault and opens it with a magic key. He jumps into the vault and gets happy to see all the wealth he saved there. He takes storage stones that he kept for storing his notes and feels the magic overflowing. After some while, Ju Huck feels tired in class because of the digging, and meanwhile, Aran again requests him to teach her. Ju Huck can't understand why she asks him to teach her, and Aran says she has never seen anyone wield a blade better than him, so she insists on learning from him. Suddenly Li Gun arrives and calls Ju Hyuk to follow him to the teacher's room because it's regarding what he asked him last time. Ju Hyuk excitedly follows him, and while going, he tells Aran to come to the training grounds tomorrow at 6 a.m., and she immediately agrees to be there. After Ju Hyuk goes to the staff room, Li Gun tells him he got permission to visit the Constellation Room's basement floor but no other floor. Li Gun takes Ju Hyuk there at night. And Jun Huck sees that the security is tight there. Li Gun says the reason is that the Constellation Room makes Valhalla one of the three great academies. Ju Hyuk asks what'll happen if one goes down to the second floor, and Li Gun replies that the person will be expelled. And before that, he'll lose his mind because the Constellation's magic power runs rampant on that floor. The gate opens, and Li Gun tells him to return in 30 minutes after visiting the floor. Ju Hyuk goes inside, and now he decides to go to the third floor because that's where his memories and weapons are. After going down, suddenly, the notification slide appears that he is being moved to the room. 
He unexpectedly moves to a room where Bart welcomes him but furiously punches him after seeing his face. Bart requests him to stop, but he continues to punch him, and after some punches, Ju Hauk says he is not the type of person who would use fists. But this case is different because Barch destroyed his comfortable future. Ju Hyuk starts kicking Barch, but Barch tells him to wait and asks him if he not wonders what that place is. He tells Jun Hyuk that it's an imaginary world, a space in relics, and Barch is just an embodiment of that world because his real body already ceased to exist 300 years ago. He flaunts to Ju Hyuk that he has become a constellation, but Jun Hyuk furiously punches him again. Meanwhile, Lee Goon is waiting for Ju Hyuk, and after some while, when he comes out, Lee Goon tells him to go to the dorm. While Ju Hyuk is going, he remembers asking Barch about the notification window, but he knows nothing because he has been in that place for 300 years without any power. Barch told him that he also got the notification to contact Ju Hyuk, and he got his memory back. Barch tells him about a suspicious person who made him the owner of the destruction tower, but he doesn't remember anything else about that man because his memory of that part is gone. Ju Hyuk says he doesn't remember losing any memories from the tower, but Barch says that Ju Hyuk's memories will appear now as he has found his weapons and shows him the village sword. When Barch said he became a constellation after using the village sword as a relic, Ju Hyuk furiously yelled at him. Ju Hyuk took back his sword because he had to complete the quest of the notification window. Suddenly a second year student and son of the Sunrise family, Larrick Sunrise, and his friends stop Ju Hyuk and tell them to go easy on him. Ju Hyuk kicks one of them, tells them to stop chattering, and dares them to come at him. The guy falls back, flying in the air, and Ju Hyuk tells the others to come at him quickly, otherwise, he'll crush their heads. Three hours ago, Larrick met Ju Hyuk, who told him to take care of Ju Hyuk, and in return, he promised to reward him with something that'll help the Sunrise family. Larrick agreed because he knew Valhalla students had to go to the Constellations room in the second semester of the first year and form a contract with one of the Constellations. The contracted students become contractors and are called second graders who can use and draw out the Constellations' power. Limerick knew that Juhuk didn't have a guarding Constellation, so he thought he could beat him easily. Larrick is now worried about seeing Juhyuk's sword, and Juhyuk starts to beat Larrick's friends. Larrick furiously gets ready to attack Juhyuk. But Ju Hyuk instantly attacks him first with his sword making Larrick pass out. Ju Hyuk slaps him to wake him up and asks who sent him. But Larrick doesn't tell him about Ventric and warns Ju Hyuk that he'll be expelled from school for this incident. Ju Hyuk tells him to think if he wants to get into a guild because people will know he lost to a first grader single-handedly. On the other hand, Ventric is waiting for Larrick's phone call to know that the job is done. But Larrick calls him to say he's taking his hands off that job. Larrick tells Ventric to stay away from Ju Hyuk's case and says that even if the Ventric family funds him, he'll never be able to reclaim the honor he lost. Ventric furiously smashes his phone and asks Yuri if she contacted Desira, to which she replies that she did and that it'll take some while for him to come to Korea. Meanwhile, in Mexico's Arripia Academy, Desira sitting on a pile of guys he just beat, gets the message that Rockdal Ventric wants him to come to Korea and take care of Ju Hyuk. He is happy that his reward is prepared because he needs money after being chased out of his family. The following day at 6 a.m., Ju Hyuk goes to the training room, and suddenly, he hears Barch talking from inside his sealed sword. Ju Hyuk asks if it's alright because he took the sword from the constellation room, and Barch replies that it's fine because he already placed a fake sword in the constellation room. Suddenly Arin arrives and asks Ju Hyuk if he will teach her swordsmanship but he replies that he'll improve her stamina because she can easily absorb and control mana. He tells her to do stretching, and after that, they do some serious workouts, and she gets exhausted. Ju Huk tells her to get up because it's getting started, but she gets worried to hear that they have 20 minutes running left. After some while during class, the subject supervisor of Dimensional Monsters, Lilia, distributes a written test among students, and after time ends, she collects the test and leaves. After some while, in the teacher's room, Lilia yells after seeing Ju Hyuk's test, and Lee Goon asks her if Ju Hyuk did not put in any effort. Lilia says that Ju Hyuk's answers can't be overlooked, and she decides to educate him in the next class that monsters can't be taken care of easily. A week later, in the next class, Lilia brings the tests after grading and tells the students that they did well but tells Jun Hyuk to come forward and shows him his test with zero marks. Lilia asks him the answer to the best way to kill Goblin. He replies that the answer is to shank it in the stomach. Since Ju Hyuk is confident about ending the monsters with one strike, she allows him to show it and takes them to the virtual world where Rock Goblin is present. 
She says she'll regrade Ju Hak's points if he does what he answered in the test. Ju Hak agrees and immediately kills a rock goblin by shanking its stomach with his sword, shocking everyone. Lilia asks how he did that because only a ranked contractor can do that, but Ju Hak took care of it with a sword. She furiously gives him another task to kill the jungle goblins with anger management issues, thinking it'll be hard to take care of them. Still, he immediately kills them all while saying he answered the questions right and finished the monster by stabbing them. The next day, Aran gets exhausted after the running session, so Juhyuk ends the session there because the academy will start and says he'll come after doing another set. After she leaves, Juhyuk starts training and asks Barch what the constellations do, and he replies that he is also a constellation. But all he did for 300 years was being isolated in the constellation room, and he doesn't know what other constellations do. He says that Juhyuk might be able to know about constellations if he finishes the new quest set in his system tab. On the other hand, in the Bantrick Mansion, which is in London, Adelia Ventrick, the vice owner of the Bentrick clan, asks her servant to report her. He tells her that the labyrinth in the outskirts of Reading has been taken care of, and he is thinking of recruiting a few competent men he found along the way. And from this time's labyrinth, there is a survivor of the ruined Robert clan. He tells her that the two guys he found are both a rank contracts, so she orders him to test their capabilities and send them her way. He also tells Adelia Rockdale has called Disara to Korea, and she gets furious to hear that. Disara is the problem child of his family, and at 19, he killed five people in England's academy just for an argument. At 20, he was completely cut from the Ventric family. Adelia tells her man to keep them under surveillance and orders him to inform Rockdale that if he gets caught doing something weird, he'll be removed from the family. On the contrary, Ju Hyuk, during class, thinks that his body is getting stronger from just working out and that it has a talent for utilizing mana. But he thinks it's weird that initially, this body was in such a bad condition that it had less mana than normal person and wonders if something bad happened in his past. Suddenly Yu Soyin passes him a note saying hey, and he gets worried about what it is now. Before the class ends, Lee announces that the students can leave the premises at the weekend, so they have to give an application. Ju Hyuk prepares an application form and Barch asks where he plans to go. Suddenly Soyin arrives, and Juhyuk reminds them that he graciously replied to her note of what he wants, but she doesn't reply. She wants to ask him how he killed the rock goblin with a sword, but her pride hurts. Meanwhile, Lilia arrives and offers him to be her assistant, but he declines and leaves to submit his application form. The next day, he goes to a market and is shocked to see it. One night before going to the market, Juhyuk searched for a trading forum where he could sell the treasures he found in the vault and he learned that after paying the entrance fee, the people were allowed to trade anything freely. Though it's a market anyone worldwide can use, it's seen as a black market due to the evildoers that trade on it. The person who made the market is a guardian constellation called the Hidden Ruler. While searching about the market, Juhyuk gets a message from Aran that she can't make tomorrow's training because she has to go out, and he tells her to have a good trip. After that, he made a reservation at a trading forum and got its location. The next day, he goes to the location, which looks like an old cafe, and after going in, he heads towards its right corner and finds a door there. After entering the door, Juhak gets inside the market, but strangely, he feels familiar there, especially its purple sky and the cloudy moon. Suddenly he sees a guy there whom he has to give two million won to ask about the place he wants to go. Juhak says he wants to sell some jewels, and the guy tells him to go to the market in the third district. Many merchants there buy anything from jewels to weapons. The guy suggests he go to Morris, who's known to have the best prices, and gives Juhak a mask to wear because of the nature of the market. After wearing the mask, Juhak meets Morris and shows him the jewels he wants to sell. Morris gets shocked to check the jewels are from the era of destruction. When Juhyuk asks how much he can offer for the artifacts, Morris asks him where he got those artifacts from because he looks only 20 years old. Juhyuk reminds that those questions are not asked there, so Morris apologizes for his question and says that he can't buy those artifacts because he lacks the capital to buy them all. Morris suggests Juhyuk to got to the auction hall for his money's worth, and it'll take 2-3 weeks for an item to sell there. Juhyuk asks him the estimated worth of his artifacts, and when he shows Juhyuk the amount, he can't count the zeros in it. Juhyuk asks how much money Morris is missing, and he replies that he has three-fourth of the total worth, and Junhyuk agrees to sell jewels to him. Morris buys eight of those artifacts, checks the magic of the destruction era still flowing through them, and thinks he is lucky to buy those at such a price. Suddenly a guy arrives at Morris's shop, and he gets worried. After leaving the market, Juhak is happy that his money issue is solved. But suddenly, 
he gets a call from an unknown number. When he picks it up, it's Lilia calling him to come to the front of Valhalla Fitness Room so that she can treat him to lunch. Juhak thinks to go and leech off of her for a free meal as he is free. On the other hand, Morris asks the guy Black Cat who is the owner of the market that what he is doing there. But Black Cat replies that he is there because Morris seems to have anonymously applied for the auction for the first time in a while, and asks Morris to show him the items he listed for auction. After checking the artifacts, Black Cat says his constellations won a ring from those artifacts. Juhak meets Lilia in a restaurant inside Valhalla, and while eating, Lilia asks him why he is not eating. Juhyuk tells her that he is wondering why there is a restaurant-like place inside Valhalla, and she replies that aside from the school cafeteria and the faculty restaurant, there are also ordinary restaurants in Valhalla. Juhyuk says he is not that interested in knowing that, and when he asks her why she called him, she offers him again to be her assistant, but he immediately refuses her offer. Lilia tells Juhyuk to think about it before giving her an answer and says if he becomes her assistant, he'll be provided with a load of benefits. She knows that Juhuk knows why she asked him to eat out, so she requests him to at least listen to her. Juhuk asks her about the benefits, and she tells them that he'll be granted a scholarship and have the opportunity to write a thesis paper with her. She tells him that if he writes a thesis paper, he'll be able to open a new horizon for monsters, and if that happens, his name will be known in the World Monsters Research Institute, and wealth and honor will follow naturally afterward. She also tells Juhyuk that instead of going out once a month, he can go out more than twice a week. Juhyuk thinks that if there were a great benefit that he could be gaining from being her assistant, then he would have thought about it. But there's a particular one. The most urgent thing for him is to go to the Eye of Great Forest, that's on the notification window. And he can only go there during the first year performance evaluation, so he thinks it would be tough for him to be an instructor. Juhak says that he doesn't plan to be her assistant, and he doesn't plan on writing a thesis paper. Lilia asks if he wants to trade information instead. In that case, if she gives him information that interests him, in return, he has to give her information about targeting monsters. When he asks her what information she wants, she says she wants information about the monster who has been hanging out with Choi Aran. Juhak knows that Aran is hanging out with him because she wants to see his physical training, so he immediately rejects Lilia's offer. Suddenly Lilia tells him that Choi Aran will be kicked out of her family soon, but he immediately gets up to leave because he doesn't hear the benefits that don't interest him. Lilia tells him that she already gave him information, so he should do the same, but he replies he didn't ask her for that information. Juhak is curious that if Lilia is this childish when squabbling, why is she so stern while teaching? She replies that it's because she is the instructor in charge of labyrinth monsters, and if she messes around too much while teaching, the students might get into trouble. She tells him that targeting monsters is directly related to the survival rate of the students, and if she becomes lenient while teaching them, then the students won't be able to memorize their target. Juhyuk thinks they are just playing with a concept, but Lilia says it isn't like that and that she is merely doing her job as an instructor. Juhyuk tells her to cheer up and walks to leave, but when Lilia tells him to pay back for the information she told him, Juhak says he'll nod and leaves. On the other hand, the patriarch of the Choi clan, Choi Jonsiok, tells to Jinsa Guild attack captain and Choi Jin family's oldest son, Choi Jingum, and the family's second daughter Choi Aran that if they pass through the selection trial, they'll have the opportunity to enter a contract using the Blue Moon Sword, a sacred relic. Choi Jonsiok says that it's a token of recognition as the legitimate successor of the family. But if they get eliminated, as per the family tradition, they'll be expelled from the family. John Siok informs them that they'll proceed with the selection trial in three weeks and tells them to leave. While leaving, Jingun asks Aran if she is so insensitive that she doesn't see the look on their father's face when she tells him that she will participate in the selection trial. Jingun says Aran has greed for the family's position even though she is the illegitimate child and says she, who only has the protection of the constellation, is not at par with him who has a normal contract. Jingun says since she has given up and is sitting and watching the family's money be imbibed, he will make her realize the price for doing that. Jingun says he'll see her in three weeks and leaves. Aran remembers her mother, before dying, told her to become the head of that family, and that way, it would be nice for her to be in that position and do whatever she wanted. On the other hand, during class, Barch tells Juhak that it's midterm season as he hears Juhyuk's homeroom teacher explaining the midterms. 
but Ju Hyuk doesn't know that because he doesn't pay attention to the class. Lee Goon informs the students that exams are of huge significance in Valhalla, and for both the midterm and final exams, the lower scoring pupils will be kicked out of the school immediately, so all the students need to get their act together. Lee Goon tells the students to prepare well for the written and practical tests. After hearing this, Ju Hyuk thinks there is not much to the practical test, but the written test is tough though, and he has to stick to the school until he gets the eye of the great forest. But he doesn't know how to get there. Ju Hyuk knows Barch has taken most of the classes, so he tells him to give the test instead, and he'll check his answers and tell if anything is wrong. Barch thinks it would be a proxy test and finds it quite unfair, but Ju Hyuk says there is nothing unfair because he'll be doing the test with Barch telling him the answers anyway. After the class ends, Aran asks Ju Hyuk if they will train again. Ju Hyuk asks if she wants to stop the training, but she replies it's not about that. Ju Hyuk knows she wants to learn swordsmanship because she probably can't use a blade, so he decides to teach her how to hold a blade as he also needs to practice with his weapon. Ju Hyuk takes her to the training room and asks how long it has been since she used her sword, to which she replies that she hasn't touched her sword since she started strength training with him. When Aran tells Ju Hyuk that she used her sword every day before training, Ju Hyuk tells her to unsheathe her sword, put strength into her pinky and ring finger, and grab the hilt firmly. Aran follows Ju Hyuk's instructions and feels that she didn't put magic into the sword, but it feels more secure and stable than holding the sword with both hands. Ju Hyuk tells her to come at him with everything she got, and when she does that, he tells her that she has become much faster, but prevents her from putting more magic into her feet than needed. Aran again attacks him, and he notices her advance is good, but she needs to rotate her body slightly more when she stops. Ju Hyuk tells her to attack continuously and not rest, so she continues to attack him and feels that she is much stronger right now because of the training. After training for a day, Aran gets exhausted, and Ju Hyuk calls it a day. Aran thinks her current craftsmanship is sharper than ever, incomparable to her skills during the entrance ceremony, but she feels she couldn't even reach Ju Hyuk. Aran asks Ju Hyuk if he'll spar with her again next time, but he replies that he doesn't know. However, Ju Hyuk thinks it's helpful to spar with Choi Aran, and it's fun to teach her since she has talent because he felt during the entrance ceremony that she is familiar with draftsmanship. Ju Hyuk is thankful for that familiar draftsmanship because it can help him find his senses, and if it were 300 years ago, she wouldn't have been a talent worth his disciple, but he doesn't have that freedom now. When she asks him to spar with her again, he jokes around a bit and replies that he doesn't want to. But when she accepts it immediately, Ju Hyuk asks if she is giving up so quickly. Aran says he is right because she thinks she'll become even stronger if she follows his words. She tells Ju Hyuk that she'll see him later and leaves. Two weeks later, the students are present in Valhalla Stadium, and Soyeon thinks it's her first time there since the entrance ceremony. Sayuk also wonders if all the first-year students are present, and Ju Hyuk wonders why they are gathered there. Barch tells Ju Hyuk that his homeroom teacher told him about this two weeks ago, and suddenly, the teachers arrived there. Sangchyol explains that Valhalla's midterm exam practical exam evaluation is a dungeon attack. He says that they'll team up and go into an artificial dungeon, and they are free to make up a team of any number of members, but the right amount of people per team is 8. Sangchyol explains that they'll evaluate the students based on their level of contribution to the dungeon attack, and the criteria for disqualification is if they can't pass within the given time. After saying that the dungeon's difficulty is F+, Sangchyol announces the start of the exam and the students ask each other to join their teams. Soyeon says their team leader is not good enough and asks for anybody else, but she thinks she doesn't need to pick someone better than her, and 5 hours is enough for 8 people in an F-plus dungeon. She knows that contribution is important, and she can choose someone with good skills with a party of 6 people. It looks easy, but difficult to stand out, so she tells others to follow her and becomes the leader. Sangchyol thinks that it's as he expected after seeing Soyeon's strategy, that if they are a child of the fifth generation, they seem to have grasped the point of the exam well. But the rest of the students go into the dungeon as a team of 20 or a group of 8 people, and if the team is not balanced, there'll be fights. Sangchyol tells Lee Goon that after around 30 minutes, all the students will enter the dungeon, so he tells Lee Goon to get ready to score them. Suddenly Ju Hyuk notices Aran hasn't gone into the dungeon, and when he asks her what she will do, she replies that she'll do what he says. Ju Hyuk can't understand why she is following his words like a sword since the last training, so he says he is going alone, but she also decides to go in alone. Meanwhile, some guys there notice Aran going in alone and offer her to join them because they are a team of seven, and they'll be eight with her. 
She refuses, saying she'll go alone, but they tell her not to be crazy because she'll be disqualified. Arin is persistent that she can do it because Juhauk said it's not difficult, and enters the dungeon alone. In Valhalla's stadium monitor room, the students are getting evaluated, and Lee Goon thinks Sang Chial is grading the students accurately. When Sang Chial was an active duty soldier, he was called Clear Master. Sang Chial is a legendary contractor with a 99% dungeon clearing rate, so Lee Goon thinks Sang Chial understands the core of dungeon attacks better than anybody else, and that's how he can give accurate scores and Lee Goon respects him for that. Meanwhile, Sang Chial thinks it's a pretty good year overall, and he believes that the students of the fifth generation are active as a whole, and among them, there is a remarkable student Soyin. Soyin orders her shielded tanks to block the front line of the monsters and command the archers to attack the monsters who jump out from the sides. They follow her orders, and she manages to kill the monster with her attack, making Sang Chial think she is amazing. Sang Chial thinks she gave her team members definite roles to play, and she makes moves that will earn her points. Sang Chial believes that if she does well on the midterms, it's only a matter of time before she gets back to the top, and if it hadn't been for Ju Hyuk during the entrance ceremony, her record wouldn't have been sullied. Sang Chial decides to see what Ju Hyuk is doing, but his search fails, and he worryingly thinks that the search machine can find the information on all the students that have entered the dungeon. When he checks the artificial dungeon clear list, he gets shocked to see Ju Hyuk already cleared the dungeon without a party with a clear time of 23 minutes and 32 seconds. Sang Chial wonders if it's possible for a 17-year-old high schooler to achieve this time and decides to look at Ju Hyuk's recording. Sang Chial sees that Ju Hyuk cut down all the jungle goblins effortlessly, and when he had to kill the golem that was simulated, especially for the midterm exam, Ju Hyuk kills him down with a single attack. Sang Chial thinks that the first place for the midterm exam goes to Ju Hyuk. After the exam, Li Goon goes to the teacher's room with exam results in his hands and remembers that when he told Sang Chial that the results were according to their expectations, Ju Hyuk came first. Sang Chial said that it was unexpected because he expected Ju Hyuk to get first place but to think Ju Hyuk would beat that dungeon by himself without obtaining a single injury, Sang Chial was shocked. Sang Chial told Lee Goon that if Ju Hyuk grows up and enters the industry, Korea can recapture its title as the one. Sang Chial also said the other unexpected thing of the competition was Choi Aran that they didn't know she would beat Soyin for second place. Sang Chial didn't know what happened, but Aran challenged the dungeon by herself just like Ju Hyuk, and she took little time to beat it. Granted, she sustained many injuries, but she cleared the dungeon. Accordingly to Sang Chial, if the exam focused on teamwork, Soyin definitely would have scored higher. But Ju Hyuk and Aran received better scores because it was focused on their level of contribution. Sang Chial told Lee Goon that they wouldn't recommend Ju Hyuk and Aran's ways to other students because it's not something ordinary students can successfully replicate. Lee Goon remembers he saw Aran when he was an executive at the Choijin Guild, and she had an aura of a model student who only practiced swordsmanship. But he wonders how she got the idea of doing the dungeon alone. Lee Goon wonders if it's because of Ju Hyuk but then he shakes off that idea and decides to get the grades ready. The next day, after seeing the results, Rockdal gets furious and goes to meet Desira, who has arrived in Korea. While having their meal, Desira asks about what Ju Hyuk does, to which Rockdal replies that he is just a brainless freshman from a nursery school who disgraced him greatly. Rockdal asks Desira to teach a lesson to Ju Hyuk, but Desira asks if he can kill Ju Hyuk. Rockdal lets Desira choose that, and Desira replies that it's different from the last time and he has to prepare the board properly. Desira said that because of Yuria he had to deal with a long time ago, he fought with the palace family. Desira doesn't know if it's because there are not many people in the palace family, but he has had to kill more because the rumors were spreading too far. Desira says it's difficult for him to enter Valhalla and make a mess there, so Rockdal says he'll do his best to set the stage for Desira and tells him not to worry. One week later, Ju Hyuk applies to go out again when Barch asks him if he hasn't already gone out once, to which Ju Hyuk replies that he has, but they are allowing him to go out again. Barch understands that Ju Hyuk got the chance to leave because he did well in the midterm exam, and Ju Hyuk says Barch is right. Ju Hyuk doesn't want to waste this opportunity because he has to find his notes which he buried 300 years ago, so he goes to Suwon, but suddenly Desira arrives there. The members of the Ventric family use Desira's talent of insane propensity towards elixirs to raise their status even by just a bit. He could consume any elixir given to him without any issues, and his parents also fed him elixirs worth hundreds of millions per bottle. At 16, he became stronger than an adult, and his parents wanted to use him to gain recognition from their family. 
but he didn't want to live his life under their control. He had overwhelming power, so he thought, why would he care about his family's recognition and kill his family members? Adelia, who considered herself the head of the family, kicked him out of the family, but he didn't care. Whenever he got his commission, most of his problems were solved through money, and even he became bold after his ties to the family were served. When he got a request from Rockdale, he offered money as well, but Desira's interest in Juhak was bigger. He knew that Juhak finished first place in the Valhalla entrance exam, and he heard that Juhak was a madman who used abusive language to get all the guild scouts kicked out. Desira wondered how amusing toying with Juhak would be, so he tried to entertain himself by having some fun with him. But after facing Ju Hyuk, he wondered what kind of guy Ju Hyuk was. He asks Ju Hyuk what kind of drugs he takes to get so strong because he doesn't think there are any cheap elixirs an orphanage like Ju Hyuk could buy. Ju Hyuk, while laughing, Desira thinks he takes steroids and understands that Desira is a drug-abusing cheater. When Desira asks if Ju Hyuk didn't get stronger using elixirs, Ju Hyuk replies that he never took drugs and became strong through difficult training and exercise. Juhak says he can compare Desira to Osea, but says it'd be rude to compare a naturally muscular guy with a boy like Desira. Desira furiously removes his sword, and Juhak notices his magic power growing. Desira attacks Juhak saying that he'll not let him go easily, but Juhak kicks him down, saying that Desira is stupid to let his opponent charge up. He starts to punch Desira in the face, but when Desira requests him to stop, Juhak says Desira can't lose his mind just yet and calls him an elixir-chugging idiot. Juhak says he would have forgiven Desira if he had only picked up a fight with him, but now he'll let Desira go because he said he would take care of Juhak. On the contrary, Rockdil, while waiting in his room, thinks that Desira will have taken care of Juhak and thinks Desira might have killed Juhak, which makes him feel relieved. Rockdil tells Yuria to get his car, and meanwhile, he gets a call from Desira, but when he asks if he took care of Juhak, no one replies. Suddenly Rockdil hears Juhak's voice, who tells him that Desira wants him to burn two incense sticks for him if he dies. Juhyuk tells Rockdil to wait for him, and Rockdil gets terrified to hear that. Rockdil hangs up without answering, and Juhyuk thinks he is rude and wonders what to do with Desira. On the other hand, Yuria takes tea for Rockdil, but he tells her to put it on the table and get lost. He never would have thought that Juhyuk could beat Desira even after what happened with Limerick, but now he starts thinking of ways to finish Juhyuk. Rockdal gets worried because it's about time the news reaches the Ventric family, and it has gotten too out of hand, but suddenly, he thinks of a plan. He remembers that Juhak is from a lowly background and won't be able to get to the Ventric family, but just in case, he decides to keep an eye on Juhak. Meanwhile, Juhak is returning after the fight when Barch asks if Desira left his brain at home when he came to fight Juhak. Juhak replies that when the time comes, He'll report Desira, but for the moment, he decides to keep the information to himself because there is nothing more for him to do. When Barch asks if Juhak would have killed Desira, he replies that he would have done that if they were in the past, but at the moment, he would get in trouble. Barch tells Juhak he is worried about the magic Desira released earlier because it felt strangely familiar to him. If Desira had released more magic, he would have confirmed it. Barch asks Juhak if he doesn't feel anything. To which Juhak replies that 300 years ago, monsters used to sacrifice cows and dogs to use that kind of black magic. But Barch thinks that Juhak cannot distinguish people by their magic. A while ago, when Juhak asked Desira about who sent him, he could not reply because Juhak broke his jaw, so Juhak adjusted his jaw so he could answer. Still, when Desira remained silent again, Juhak broke his fingers. Desira told Juhak about Rockdil, and it confirmed that he was the one who picked on Juhak last time. When Juhak asked Desira why he didn't look like a student of Valhalla and whom he was affiliated with, Desira replied that he'd find out one way or another. Juhak warns to break his two more fingers, so Desira spills that he is Desira, the first species, and he takes care of many commissions as a mercenary. Juhak remembered hearing about first species, and he said Desira is nothing more than a bully who gets paid. Desira told Juhak that the constellation that the first species worship is the hidden side of the blade, and he was also contracted to a constellation. When Desira said the result of their fight would have been different if he charged his magic for 30 more minutes, Juhak again breaks his jaw, saying that he sounded better silent. While returning, Juhak searches for first species and discovers it's an evil group. He is also annoyed because he couldn't find his notes and is mad at Rockdal for trying to make him look shady. Juhyuk decides to screw Rockdal with modern techniques, and as he recorded all of Desira's conversations, he only needs a platform to upload them. 
Juhak calls Lilia, and she thinks he agreed to be her assistant. But he replies that he called to know if Lilia knows any new reporters. After the news was published, it became a hot topic that a member of the Ventric family tried to kill a Valhalla student. But the student beat him up and handed him over to Valhalla after informing an instructor. Ju Hyuk is happy to see what a modern war looks like, and Barch tells him that for a person from 300 years ago, Ju Hyuk has adapted to the current culture very well. Ju Hyuk did have a hard time after reincarnation, but he focused on getting used to everything by scrolling through the community tab and watching the news. Ju Hyuk tells Barch that it's a pity he was only trying to screw Rockdell, but the journalists rushed to publish about the Ventric family and screwed over the entire family. Ju Hyuk thinks the reporter Lilia introduced him to seems quite the big shot because he didn't know the story would blow up this much. A few days later, Adelia Ventric holds a press conference to clear her family's position and expresses her apologies towards the attacked student and Valhalla Academy. Adelia announces that Desira has been excommunicated from the Ventric family, and in Desira's confession that the victim claims to have recorded, he said that Rockdell Ventric gave the order. However, Desira later testified that this was, in fact, a lie in an attempt to escape the predicament he found himself in at the time. Therefore, Adelia says that the Ventric family played no part in this incident, but as Desira did once belong to the family, so it's their moral responsibility to make amends. As the head of the family, Adelia announces to visit the victim herself and apologize to him in person. For Rockdal Ventric, she announces to summon him home to conduct an intensive internal investigation with the Ventric family. On the other hand, Rockdal is trembling in fear while watching the press conference, and meanwhile, he gets a call from his father who tells him to come back to England for a while because it's family's order. The next day, Juhak S watches the news that Desira agrees that the Ventric family is right that he is the only perpetrator behind the incident. Juhak feels he can't stand this family. While thinking that someone from the family will visit him, he feels awkward, and this is killing him. Ju Hyuk has a favor to ask, so he goes to meet Lilia, and before she says anything, he clears that he will not be her assistant, so she asks him why he called her. Ju Hyuk says he called her to thank her for introducing him to the reporter, so he'll give her some information on dealing with the monsters. Lilia gets excited, and Ju Hyuk asks since he'll be telling her so much if she could help him leave the school grounds on the coming weekend and she immediately agrees. Meanwhile, in the North Pacific, a prisoner transporter ship Al-8 is transporting Desira, and he is mad because he never thought he would be put on a ship and treated like cargo. He wonders if he is being transferred to the prison tower in the middle of the North Pacific. Desira knows that an S-grade constellation created this haven of deprivation themselves, and it's a prison that turns all the contractors into normal human beings. Desira thinks it doesn't matter because all he has to do is shut up so that Rockdal can stay in the Ventric family. And this way, his sentence will reduce to five years. Suddenly Desira hears someone call him Ugly Face, and when he turns back, someone cuts off his head immediately. After killing Desira, the guy says the first species don't need a guy like Desira. Meanwhile, in the Ventric family mansion, Rockdell and his father, Eden Ventric, present themselves before Adelia. When she asks Rockdell what he will do, he apologizes to her, but she asks if this is it and if his apology is supposed to fix anything. Adelia asks him to tell in detail what compelled him to commit such an evil act. After he tells her that he wants to take care of Ju Hyuk, she gets furious because Rockdal acted on his own because he believed that Ju Hyuk insulted the Ventric family, but his pride was hurt. Adelia blames him for dragging the family name through the mud, so Rockdal begs that he'll do everything to restore his family's fallen honor. However, she says the only way to recover is to excommunicate him. When Eden says the punishment is too harsh, Adelia asks if he wants to be expelled. Adelia wants to kill or excommunicate Rockdal instantly but that would make it definitively known that Rockdell ordered Desira to attempt the murder. Adelia tells Rockdell that she won't expel him for the moment and orders him to return to Valhalla and keep his mouth shut. Says that after she meets with Ju Hyuk, she'll think about it thoroughly. After that, Adelia orders them to leave, and while going back, Eden warns Rockdell from doing anything rash, but Rockdell reminds Eden that Adelia told him he'll be excommunicated sooner or later. He says he cannot do anything because the media is watching him closely, but he'll take action when everything calms down. But before that, he has something to take care of and ask his father to help him. A few days later, Ligun tells Juhak that the Ventric family's head will soon meet him and apologize. Still, Juhak says he has nothing to do with her because she explicitly said the family had nothing to do with the incident. 
Duhyuk understands that the Ventric family wants to carry out Rockdal's punishment themselves, and Adelia is coming to see him because she has no other choice. Duhyuk feels it's annoying. But Lee Goon says he and Saint Yal are also very upset about the situation because the Ventric family belittles the confession Ju Hyuk recorded to protect their reputation. Lee Goon also says that not too long ago Ventric family donated a large sum of money to the school, and the school will probably turn a blind eye to the incident if they are given enough money. Ju Hyuk understands that he'll talk with the family head, but Lee Goon is shocked to see Ju Hyuk's normal reaction, and Ju Hyuk replies he has always been normal. Meanwhile, someone knocks on the door and Lee Goon says Adelia has arrived, so he tells Ju Hyuk to have a good conversation with her because Lee Goon will leave after letting her in. After welcoming Adelia, Lee Goon tells her to take her time, and he leaves from there. Adelia introduces herself as the head of the Ventric family to Ju Hyuk, and he, while sitting, replies that it's nice to meet her. First, Adelia apologizes to Ju Hyuk for the attack perpetrated by Disira, but Ju Hyuk replies that Disira was excommunicated, so it's okay. Adelia says she heard that Rockdal has been causing him trouble at school, but Ju Hyuk says that was just once, so it doesn't matter anymore. Ju Hyuk tells her that she announced that Rockdal has nothing to do with the incident, and as she announced it like that, he has nothing to say. Adelia says she needs to talk to him about that and says that she made an official statement soon after the attack, but they were in a situation where neither the media nor the citizens believed it, so she says she wanted to create an opportunity to resolve the misunderstanding. She asks for Ju Hyuk's help, but when he refuses, she replies that she thought he would say that. Adelia offers that if Ju Hyuk helps her this once, she'll promise to give him full support from now until he graduates and offers to recommend him to a guild that the Ventric family sponsors and help him strive as a hunter in Korea. But Ju Hyuk replies that to think she'll give him this much to shut up, she must be desperate. Ju Hyuk is mad because she is making it feel like nothing happened, so he replies that he doesn't need a reward, and all he wants is to see her live with the dishonor Rockdal gave her. In a fit of anger, Adelia asks Ju Hyuk, whom he thinks he is, to talk to her like that, and Ju Hyuk taunts her that now she is showing her true colors. Adelia says she came to the school to make it more convenient for Ju Hyuk, but he dared to be arrogant. Adelia says she wants to be generous and give him a chance, but he is throwing it away, and she wants to kill him now. Ju Hyuk mocks her that if she attacks him, she can't kill him, and that's all she can do. While leaving, Adelia furiously gets up and says she'll make Ju Hyuk regret what he has done. After she leaves, Barch asks if Ju Hyuk needs to do all that, but Ju Hyuk replies that the people who thought they should be worshipped are the ones he hates the most. Ju Hyuk knows what she will do, and he hates the people who put leashes on everyone. Ju Hyuk decides to go to the training room, but while going there, he suddenly sees Arin talking to the Jin family's eldest son Jingun and wonders who he is. Jingun says she'll win against her no matter how much she trains at Valhalla and offers her not to come to the weekend selection test if she wants to stay in the family, but she refuses to do so. When Jingun says he is giving her a last chance, and she can't comprehend it, suddenly, someone abuses Jingun and says he is the one who can't understand. Simultaneously Ju Hyuk appears and asks why Jingun wants to stop Arin who is putting in so much work. But Jingun asks him who he is and why he is cursing him without knowing him. Ju Hyuk replies that he doesn't care who Jingun is and warns him from trespassing on school grounds and demanding something from a student. When Ju Hyuk tells Jingun to get lost, he leaves, saying he'll see Arin at the test. Arin thanks Ju Hyuk for his help, but he says it's nothing and asks her to go to the training and says he can't train her on the weekend because he is going somewhere, so they'll train her today. A few days later, in Shihyun near a hill, Ju Hyuk is searching for his notes again, but Barch asks him if he hasn't found a lot of relics and storage stones in his old notes. Ju Hyuk agrees with him, but Ju Hyuk wants to know how many notes are left and if something amazing could still be hidden in the notes. Ju Hyuk tells Barch that if he finds the notes, he can overcome his shortcomings when he was Kim Huno. On the other hand, the reporters are present outside Choijin family because it's the day of the Choijin family's selection test, and the head of the family, Choi Jon Seok, announces that the one who passes the test will be announced as the successor, and the one who fails will be banished from the family. After knowing Arin and Jingun are ready, Jon Seok gives them the task of finding the dual blade hidden in the mountains and the one who brings the blade and presents it to Jon Seok will be the winner of the selection test. Jon Seok clears that it doesn't matter how they obtain the blade, but killing others is strictly forbidden. The test starts, and Arin runs to find the blade while Jingun knows she'll find it sooner or later, so he plans to take it away from her when she finds it. A week ago, when Jingun was leaving after meeting Arin, 
he got a call from a mysterious guy who asked him about the blade, and he told him that he had to take the selection test to get the blade. The mysterious guy tells him to hurry up because it's taking a lot of time, and Jingun apologizes and asks if he will get the blade and if the guy will keep his promise. The guy replies that the promise will be fulfilled because they made it before a constellation and suggested focusing on the target. Jingun knows it's his last chance to get the blade, so he is determined to find it. Meanwhile, Arin feels the trace of the blade's magic and notices it is continuing in a way. Suddenly Jingun arrives there and asks who taught her the skill of finding the blade using magic traces. Arin remembers that Juhyuk told her about magic control, and to practice small magic-oriented controls. Still, she didn't know how to do that, so he told her to relax his entire body and use her fingerprints and toes to weakly extend her magic. When Arin managed to do that, Juhyuk told her to sense the magic in the air, but after she sensed the shape of magic around Juhyuk's body, she gets shocked. Juhyuk taught her that this way, she can notice weak magic energy that doesn't leak from the body. Juhyuk said that the more she used it, the more easily she would sense the magic residue on the ground or in the air, and told her to learn further on her own. Jingun asks her who Juhyuk is, but he instantly remembers that he is the shameless guy who was with Arin last time. Arin furiously replies that Juhyuk is much stronger than a brat like Jingun and asks why he came there. Suddenly Jingun attacks Arin, but he gets shocked to see that she is pushing him away and wonders when she became so strong. On the other hand, while searching for notes, Juhyuk wonders if there are no notes there either because he hid so many notes. But there is only one in the eternity of Valhalla. Finally, he manages to find a trace, but suddenly, he notices something and sees some thunders in the sky. Meanwhile, Arin is attacking Jingun, and he barely stops and asks if she is learning to become a wild boar at Valhalla. Arin tells him to give up, but he replies that she is insane and instantly runs to stab her. But she rotates her sword and slashes it upwards as taught by Ju Hyuk. As Jingun loses grip on his sword, Arin hits him down with the handle of her sword, and as she decides to resume her search again, suddenly Jingun gets up. Jingun says she'll never be able to defeat him because he has a contract, and Arin asks if he is a villain after noticing the magic surrounding his sword. When she tries to attack, he immediately dodges her swing. He stabs her stomach, making it difficult for her to get up. She asks him when he mentioned the contract. He meant that he was contracted to an evil constellation. Still, he replies that when he was the offense leader of the Jinsa Guild, he signed a contract with an agreed constellation to save face. But now he is on the side of devotees. Arin has heard that devotees are the third most evil group in the world, so she asks Jingun if the benefits they give are better than enjoying life, to which he replies he wants incredible power, command, and deviation from the need for senses. Jingun tells her that he was 12 years old when he joined the Jinsa Guild, and since then, he has been working for his family's guild icon. He was expected to set an example as the eldest son of the Choijin family at an age when all he wanted to do was play. Jingun tells Arin the readout that he is still in the guild because of his father's surveillance, and he was filled with desire into his teenage years. It was then that a person from devotees met him and offered him to join them. In return, he could satisfy the desires that lay in his heart which was to break humans. Jingun has to give them his family's relic dual blade, but if Arin hadn't started a second selection test, he would have been given the dual blade. Arin doesn't know that it's the second test, and he tells her that 10 years ago, their older sister Choi Ajin partook in the first selection test. Arin thinks she went missing, but Jingun tells her that he killed Ajin before the search for the dual blade on the mountain. But in the end, he isn't able to find the blade, gets injured, and failed the test. Jingun says their father secretly finds and hospitalizes Ajin in a feeble attempt to save her. But when Arin asks where Ajin is, he says he'll never find that. Jingun told her that her mother collapsed because she saw her daughter's face in Arin, and as now he knows where the blade is, he decides to kill Arin. Jingun is about to cut her head, but suddenly, Juhyuk stops his sword and asks him what the hell he is doing. Jingun replies that it's their family business, but Juhyuk asks him what kind of crazy family points a sword at their sister's neck. Jingun pushes him back with a strong hit, and when Arin asks what he is doing there, he doesn't reply that he came there to find his vault, but suddenly, he sees her wound bleeding and replies that he had some business there. Juhyuk tells her to stay back and gather some magic to heal her wound, but suddenly Jingun gets up and runs to attack Juhyuk but he dodges it and hits his face. Juhyuk hits his face with a strong hit and slams him on the ground making him severely wounded. Juhyuk asks if Arin can walk, and she replies that she is unsure, but will try. Suddenly Juhyuk notices sword magic around Jingun, 
And meanwhile, Jingun gets up and hits Ju Hyuk again. But Ju Hyuk stops his attack with his sword and punches him. Jingun has no choice, so he takes out artificial remains and eats them to get stronger. Meanwhile, the reporters feel an earthquake, and suddenly, they see sword magic in the sky, and John Seok thinks it's dense enough for the general public to see it. John Seok notices the magic in the location of the dual blade, and he knows that it's a tradition not to involve himself in the selection competition. But it's dangerous, so he decides to go and look for himself. On the other hand, Jingun says that he gained power from the provisional contract with a constellation and killed them now. When the dragon kills all activities, his ability, the eye-penetrating nature, gets scared after seeing Ju Hak and exclaims that it must get out of there. Jingun is shocked to see that the constellation terminates the contract with him, and the dragon takes back all his power and escapes. So Ju Hak immediately hits him down. Simultaneously the devotee's leader and the dragon king Han Nibble get the notification that the dragon says because of him. It get into massive trouble and shouts that Han Nibble wants to disappear from the mortal plane. Han Nibble apologizes and the dragon warns him from distributing artificial relics in the future and tells him to behave well. Nibble can't understand what caused the constellation to be so furious and understands that Jingun has done something wrong, so he decides to find out what the constellation fears. On the contrary, he returns to his dormitory room and is happy to find out his notes of God's art. Juhuk tells Barch that breathing techniques can raise one's magical power to a very high level. Juhuk says that when he found the God Arts 300 years ago, he couldn't change his previous breathing technique because it was already entrenched within his body. When he fought with Barch, he got beaten up badly because of his bad breathing technique. But now Ju Hyuk can start anew with his new body and decides to stop training his physique for a bit to learn the god arts first. Barch asks if it's fine that Ju Hyuk left Aran there with Jingun, so Ju Hyuk replies that he heard someone coming, so he left, and it'll be resolved somehow. Ju Hyuk wanted to take Aran with him, but he heard someone coming, and he understood that Aran's family was on their way after seeing the sword magic and thought it'd be awkward for him to find his notes, so he told Aran to sit still because her family was coming there. Ju Hyuk told her he had something to do there and left. Aran's father arrived there. Back to the present, Ju Hyuk returns all the storage stones after he masters the god arts. On the other hand, during the Choijin family's meeting, John Seok is mad that the press immediately spread the news about the incident and that his family had an evil insider from devotees. John Seok is worried because he got an official letter from the association, and a statement from them. John Seok is relieved that Jingun got arrested and Aran's condition is stable. One of the meeting members tells John Seok that there are articles that Aran wiped out a member of devotees following the footsteps of Ju Hyuk from Valhalla. The members think it's a relief that the next family head has been confirmed and this kind of article will help her firmly establish her position as the successor John Seok also think it's good that Aran has a legitimate chance to succeed, but he thinks it's strange that she defeated Jingun herself. When John Seok went to check on her, she said that Jingun came at her with evil magic, so she knocked him out, but when he asked how she defeated her, she replied that Ju Hyuk taught her. John Seok gets worried after searching online about Ju Hyuk, that he is the one who cursed the guild scouts on the day of the entrance competition. A few days later, Ju Hyuk enters the class, and after seeing Aran, he thinks she would have been hospitalized, but she seems completely fine. Suddenly Aran turns her head and waves at Ju Hyuk with a smile, and he remembers that a few days ago, while he was practicing god arts, he got messages from Aran that she wouldn't be able to attend the training for a while because the doctor forbade her from physical exercise. Ju Hyuk told her to do as she pleased because he would be busy doing his thing. He remembers that Barch told him that the black magic felt familiar to him, but he couldn't remember it and suspects that someone is stopping him from remembering it. Ju Hyuk asked if Barch suspects the guy who made the tower, and Barch replied that it's not certain. But if he stratifies the second condition of the task, it could help him get past his mental block. Ju Hyuk remembered the second condition was the Eye of the Great Forest which he thought was an area used for performance assessment but it's where the final practical exam takes place. Back to the present, Lee Goon enters the class, announces the inter-school competition next month, and tells the students that the school plans to select its participants by choosing the highest scores in the final exam. Lee Goon tells Ju Hyuk to follow him to the office, and after going there, 
He starts talking about Ju Hyuk's participation in the competition, but Ju Hyuk immediately refuses. Lee Goon tells Ju Hyuk to listen to the details of the competition and explains that the three largest hunter training institutions in the world, Korea's Valhalla, China's White Lotus, and the Yuzu's heroes pick their first year as representatives and have them take part in the competition. The competition entails sparing, escaping a labyrinth, and much more, so Valhalla plans to send those who scored highest in the practical exam. Lee Goon sees Ju Hak yawning, so he says that the participants to get first place will be given a scholarship. But Ju Hak replies that he is not interested if they shower them with money. Lee Goon says he knows Ju Hak wants to enter the Eye of the Great Forest. The inter-school competition will occur in Valhalla so the final task will be entering the Eye of the Great Forest. It'll be the same as the final exam, and those who complete the task will be exempt from having the final exam. Ju Hak immediately agrees to enter the competition. On the other hand, Adelia asks his men how the preparations are going for secret work, and they report everything is going smoothly, but it will take another month for the preparations to complete. Adelia then asks them about Valhalla and Rockdill, but they reply there are some irregularities to report regarding him, but she tells them to report her immediately if something is awry. They report to Adelia that there is some news about the construction of a building made out of paper bills in the market, and they believe the black cat is responsible for this. Suddenly Adelia gets a notification from Beale Mask to speak in greater detail, and she gets worried about seeing the message from the constellation. On the contrary, inside Market Territory 7, Black Cat, while watching outside, thinks that he'll do anything the constellation asks of him. Still, he can't understand the purpose of constructing the building entirely from paper bills. However, the constellation is a girl preparing it as a gift for someone. 